German tanks in World War II didn't just rely on armor or firepower, they mastered the art of camouflage. From the sneaky ambush patterns to the chilling winter schemes and the uh, iconic tricolor designs, each camo had a story and a purpose. In this video I'll take you through the evolution of these camouflage and how you can recreate them on your model armor. The base color of any of this camouflage was dark yellow or dunkelgel. Subsequently, the armor of tanks was painted in irregular spots, streaks and lines with two additional colors, dark green, olive green, and dark brown, rod brown. During the spring summer period, camo colors were mostly green, during fall camo was more brownish. Number 1. Tricolor Camouflage through the war, the grey camouflage proved itself to be insufficient, especially on the Eastern Front. That's why the Dunkelberg of the, uh, dark yellow camouflage, it's super easy to do. So basically you're just, uh, the uh, base color will be uh, dark yellow or Dunkelberg. In this case, to apply the camouflage, I use a Tamiya plastic putty. Uh, it's a super nice putty if you're not familiar with airbrushing or you even want to do it uh, with a regular paintbrush, it's super easy because it's going to define all the different area of the camouflage that you want to do. It's only in 1942 uh, that the instruction of uh, a new base paint for the German was established. So the first uh, part of the camouflage is uh, a color that we call <clears throat> Olive Grun, so RAL 6003, and uh, that's the uh, the first part of uh, the, the camouflage color. The second part of the camouflage color, I will just add some, uh, again, some uh, plastic putty uh, to basically keep the, the green camouflage in place. And the second layer of, uh, mm -hmm. of our camouflage uh, would be a rod brown. So it's RAL 8017 and it basically it's a dark brown color. So after you apply your, uh, your different pieces of your plastic putty uh, where you want to, uh, to achieve the camouflage, you're just basically painting the rest with the dark brown color. The amazing thing with this product, with the, uh, the plastic putty, uh, it's uh, basically all you have to do is just remove everything and you're gonna have a really awesome uh, camouflage pattern and voila that's exactly what you're looking for it's shiny but like I said it's before weathering and things like that but that's the camouflage number two Daimler bends the ambush camo so again, the first layer or the base paint is always going to be uh, Dunkelgeld or dark yellow. It's the base paint that uh, the German established. So that's uh, what we are uh, aiming for. And the ambush camo, basically, uh, it's uh, the same process of uh, the camo that we did earlier. In this case, I will do it by hand because I'm familiar with airbrush. For me, it's a lot easier instead of using a uh, plastic putty. But honestly, don't be afraid to try to do your camo uh, by hand. It's uh, basically, it's really rewarding when you achieve to do uh, an awesome camouflage. And it's super easy, honestly. It's not something that it's super hard. So the next color uh, will be uh, dark brown. And again, uh, it's the same pattern at uh, the, the tricolor um, camouflage that we talk about in the first part of uh, this video. Those color were introduced is I would say late 1943 uh, on the history part. And uh, after you did this, uh, the tricolor camouflage, the only difference is you're gonna add some small dots. So basically, again, in the green and uh, dark uh, brown area, you're going to add some dark, uh, not dark, but uh, Dunkelgeld or dark yellow 
dot uh, all over this uh, this kind of patterns. And on the uh, the rock brown or dark brown area, it's going to be the same thing as uh, the dark yellow. But when you are working with Dunkel Bell color, you're just going to add some rock brown dot. So it's kind of a it's not really confusing, but just remember that on the uh, the the other color that the dark yellow you're just gonna apply a dark yellow dot and on the dark yellow itself you're just gonna apply some uh, red brown dots so that's the result and it's an amazing camo number three winter camo again we start with the same base color dark yellow and at, th at that time, high quality paint uh, was only sometimes available in large enough quantities. So another widespread solution was whitewash. Uh, it was a, an inexpensive paint or stain made uh, from uh, lime and chalk dissolved in water. Uh, the thing with the whitewash uh, is uh, it was durable and would wash or wear off uh, fairly quickly. Uh, that means uh, it could be removed quite easily in spring. Um, so basically it's the same process. You apply your, uh, in this case I use uh, plastic putty again, uh, but you base paint uh, dark uh, yellow your uh, entire model and you just uh, apply your putty and you're just basically applying uh, a dark, uh, not dark, but uh, whitewash paint uh, on top uh, of your plastic putty. It's a super easy process and uh, in this case I use uh, AK Interactive. They have a whitewash uh, solution uh, already uh, in a bottle so it's super easy. Or if you, uh, you can do some kind of a, I would say close to a wash, but uh, a little bit more dense than a regular wash that uh, it's more uh, on the water side. Uh, you're just basically mix it uh, with water and uh, basically it's gonna make uh, your uh, your own wash uh, super easily so that's the result we have uh, with the winter camouflage it's super easy to do and again it's uh, something that we uh, we um, we enjoy doing Whether it's the tactical brilliance of the ambush pattern, the chilling realism of winter camo, or the bold versatility of the tricolor scheme, each camouflage tells a unique story of warfare and survival. These patterns weren't just for looks, they were crafted for survival in some of the most brutal battlefields. I hope this guide has inspired you to try these techniques on your models. Don't forget to share your creation in the comments and let's keep the story alive one model at a time.